This week on Whiteboard Friday, we've seen the release of a new bit of research called Predator Free New Zealand Conservation Country. It's written by some of our top researchers, and it really looks at the question, Predator Free New Zealand, is it doable? Is it actually a good idea? First, what predators are we talking about? Well, we're talking about possums, rats, <laughs> our good friend the rats, uh, mustelids, so things like stoats, and uh, weasels and ferrets, those sorts of things. We're talking about getting rid of those guys from our, from our country altogether. Predator Free New Zealand got off to a really interesting start about 50 years ago when a bunch of volunteers went out onto an island, a place called Maria Island, and they just threw a few bits of, bits of poison around just to try and take care of the rats there because it, oh, it looked like there were a few rats going around just like there are around the Morgan Foundation office. Next thing they know, they came back a year later, they had accidentally killed all the rats on the island and the bird life was booming. That was really where Predator Free got started. Since then, back then we had about 0.5% of our offshore islands done. Since then, in the 50 years, it's grown to about 10% of our offshore islands are now Predator Free. And with some of the projects in the pipeline, such as Predator Free Rakiura, who knows, in the next couple of decades, that might ramp up to 50%. But of course, mainland New Zealand is where the action is at. And amazingly, around about 45% of mainland New Zealand is currently under some sort of predator control. But that only happens every two or three years, and that's control, not eradication. There's only around about 0.2%, which are what we call eco-sanctuaries, fenced areas or areas that are heavily trapped where there are no possums, rats or, or mustelids and as a result the bird life is booming. So that is a pretty tiny amount. But we are working to grow it and that is what Predator Free New Zealand is all about. Firstly, it's all about mobilising people. This really is like a war. A hundred years ago we had World War I and now Predator Free New Zealand is our next war. The war on possums, rats and mustelids. And we are really gonna to need to mobilize people to do that, just as we did 100 years ago. That means getting people out, trapping in their backyards and in their local reserves, and making sure that we take care of the wildlife that's there. Secondly, joining the dots. Incredibly, there's around about 4,000, 4,000 conservation projects out there in New Zealand right now. For a population of 4.2 million, that's pretty impressive. So we need to get these groups working together and joining up. And lastly, new technology. We are gonna need new technology to grow that amount that we are trapping currently into more of the mainland so we can really move towards a predator-free New Zealand. But the ultimate question that this paper asks is, is all this effort actually gonna be worth it? Well, the answer is quite simply yes. We currently spend about $1.8 billion at the moment on the damage that predators cause. That's two things. That's controlling for predators, so that's you guys putting out your, boy, your poison at home or uh, in businesses, that sort of thing. And secondly, the damage that those predators do, things like rats nibbling on grain, for example, is a good example of the economic damage that is done. 1.8 billion. The total cost of a predator-free New Zealand, by comparison, is nine billion. So it's only going to take five or so years, really, for, for the investment in a predator-free New Zealand to be paid back just in the direct economic costs that these predators incur in our day-to-day -day society. And we all know that there's gonna be much more benefits from that. In a world without rats, possums, and mustelids, we're gonna have a lot more of our wildlife around, a lot more people wanting to live here. It's gonna be a much more exciting place to be. That is White Boy Friday. Predator-free New Zealand is doable.